the longest coastline of any continent, with numerous rivers and lakes. This is Asia, where fish is a staple of many diets. Originating from these isles is the age-old practice of fermenting fish. It extracts highly prized flavors and creates amazing delicacies using the treasures of the sea. Ninety kilometers off the coast of the Korean peninsula, the remote island of Huksando rises above the Yellow Sea. It's famed for two things, gorgeous nature and a notoriously foul-smelling fish dish, fermented skate or hongo. Crawling for skate is big business along the southwestern coast of Korea. During the peak season, between November and March, fishermen haul them by the hundreds. Koreans eat up to 11,000 tons of skate each year. Restaurants in Seoul and other mainland cities usually serve imported skate from Chile. But in Huksando, one can still sample a fresh catch. Fresh skate has a tender and delicate flavor. But in the hands of regional chefs, this drab-looking, bottom-dwelling fish undergoes a most curious form of fermentation. Skates have no bladder or kidney. They treat waste in the body by excreting it through the skin in the form of uric acid, a natural preservative. The traditional way of making hongo is to place the whole gutted fish in an earthenware pot. Female skates are preferred for their larger size and better taste. Add a layer of hay which contains natural microbes and let the fish incubate anywhere from 10 days to a month. The uric acid in the skate's skin turns into ammonia. Over time, the dish may smell offensive, but is totally safe to eat. The islanders on Huxando chanced upon this method of fermentation sometime in the mid 14th century when Japanese pirates plying the South Seas forced them inland. On their journey, all their fish had gone bad, except for the skate, which had cured in its own urine. Over in Olango, Philippines, these sand flats, mangroves and coral reefs are teeming with marine life. They are a group of low-lying islands between Cebu and Bohol. Abundant in these waters is the rabbit or spinefoot fish. Eaten fresh, it's mild and sweet. Dried, it's a great source of protein outside of the fishing season. In the 
And its entrails make a popular fish paste, native to this part of the Philippines. Dayuk. The 40,000 locals on Olango depend almost entirely on the sea for their livelihood. Armed with a day's catch, Kaloi is making an indigenous ferment. The internal organs of fish, usually tuna, are its primary ingredients. Everything, excluding the heart and the bile sac, is used. These velvety innards pack a powerful punch of vitamins and fatty acids. Thorough rinsing removes the bile and sand trapped within. When foodborne pathogens react with histidine in fish, a compound known as histamine is formed. Consumed in large amounts, histamine can lead to food poisoning. A generous helping of salt keeps the level of histamine in check. The brined fish entrails are allowed to ferment for several weeks, during which time a chemical process takes place. Proteolytic enzymes in the offal convert proteins into free amino acids, creating rich umami flavors. As the paste matures, its taste mellows and becomes less salty. Dayuk is often eaten raw as a seasoning in many traditional recipes. But if you fry it up with aromatics, it tastes even better. Releasing a tantalizing smell that Filipinos would happily marry with all their favorite foods. A humble condiment, enjoyed by people from all walks of life, turns simple, everyday dishes into hearty, flavorful meals. On Hooksando, a school has popped up to train locals in the art of skate processing. Domestic skate, or hongo, is a prized fish that sells for 60 US dollars each. Still, that price tag doesn't put off devotees who enjoy the stingy taste of fermented skate. Mr. Choi, the school principal, hopes that more islanders will benefit from this lucrative industry. In fact, the skate industry has helped to rejuvenate the economy of Hooksando. Once a bustling offshore trading post, 
Today, it's well known amongst tourists for its authentic Hongo dishes. 또 이제 옛날 맛으로 본 사람들은 옛날에 숙성된 것을 이렇게 먹자. 그 찾는 사람이 고객이 많다 보니까 여기에서 이제 이렇게 지금은 뭐 시대가 발전돼서 항아리에다가 숙성을 시킨 게 아니라 냉장고에 담아서 김치 냉장고처럼 냉장고에 담아서 그 기간으로 가지고 온도를 조정을 해서 거기서 이제 예, 발효를 시켜서 판매를 하고 있죠. Skate that has fermented for roughly a month is ready to be served. Like many fish, it's rich in nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids and taurine. Other alleged health benefits include helping with digestion and alleviating hangovers. Smelling thoroughly of ammonia, its texture is similar to that of raw fish. But the minty taste it delivers is unique and can be quite addictive, as fans claim. Traditionally, skate sashimi is served as part of samhap, a harmonious trinity. The other two components are boiled pork belly and old kimchi a combination known to counter, if not mask, the odour and flavour of the skate altogether. For those who prefer, it can also be steamed with a kanjang, or soy-based sauce. The cooked strands of flesh simply peel right off the cartilage. Gourmets say a proper skate dinner must end with skate soup. The fermented liver, with a taste and texture similar to foie gras, goes into a duenjang stew topped with vegetables. Cook Sando's crown jewel ingredient. An integral part of local tradition and law. Attracts a following far and wide. To the northeast of Kota Kinabalu is the small town of Kulu, where local river fish is a dietary staple. The Kadazan Dusun people of Samba, who traditionally lived in the highlands, used to obtain fish from coastal towns or the rivers that run through their land, combining it with a magical yet poisonous seed of the forest. They've created a delicious dish, heralded as the region's ceviche. On the picturesque Mongoluton River, Pison Jaljip is going fishing. The young Kadazan Dusun is somewhat of an expert of the cuisine, 
and showcases them on his social media. The local community enforces fishing rules, called dagal, on this stretch of waterway, limiting fishing to specific zones in order to harvest the river's resources in a sustainable manner. Riverfish is the centerpiece of many traditional Tadazandusun recipes. Recipes that Pison fears will be lost beyond his generation. In the olden days, the Tadazanduzuns prolonged the shelf life of their produce, such as fish, meat, and vegetables, by making a ferment known as boso. A preservative called pangi is the elixir that prevents the fish from turning stale and foul-smelling. In other parts of Southeast Asia, pangi is popularly known as buakalwa. It contains poisonous hydrogen cyanide, but can be made edible by boiling and fermentation. The processed seeds turn from creamy white to dark brown or black. The kernels within are full of antibacterial compounds. Salt goes in. Then the pangi powder. And give it a good mix. Ikan jenis macam ini 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 adalah ikan sarawi karena panggil kalau di sini tempat saya. Jadi selalunya orang kampung kasih jadi boso ini ikan sarawi ini. Sebab ikan sarawi ini dia banyak tulang. Jadi bila kena boso semua pun boleh makan tulang tulang boleh makan sisik dia boleh makan semua boleh makan sebab dia jadi lembut. The final ingredient is the all-important cooked rice, full of starches and sugars for the microbes to feed off. Okay, sekarang saya mau campur nasi. Ini adalah nasi sajuk. Jadi kalau guna nasi sajuk, ini ikan ini dia akan masak ataupun dia jadi boso lambat sedikit. Tapi kalau guna nasi yang suam-suam, yang panas-panas, tujuh hari boleh makan sudah. Dia maksud saya dia punya tulang-tulang ini kan lembut sudah betul. The fish is arranged neatly in a clean, airtight container. And a spontaneous fermentation begins. Various bacteria and enzymes present in the fish proceed to solubilize its proteins and lipids, while lactic acid produced when sugars in rice are broken down, limits the growth of bad bacteria and gives boso a sour taste. A week later, the river fish mushy and opaque, have taken on a strong, fishy saltiness. Raw fish boso does wonders for one's gut health, 
not to mention its soft, chewy texture that melts in the mouth. It's a way of life, love, and spirit of generations past that Bisson hopes will live on through food. In Kota Kinabalu, Chef Lin Yong gives traditions a new lease of life with a menu that interprets classic dishes such as boso. This batch that we got was actually really tasty. And we thought, oh, you know, with some seafood and locally sourced ingredients, I think it could be amazing. Let's re-season it a little bit, and then we will brush it onto some prawns and make something amazing. Traditionally, boso is eaten raw. But for the younger generation who cannot stand the smell and taste of raw boso, the chef has created an alternative. But we have to be careful not to overuse or make, um, use too much of it because it can be quite overpowering. A versatile condiment that adds the extra oomph to a spot of seafood. From the cheap and easy to the weird and wonderful, Asia's ethnic fish ferments are a way of life for its coastline communities. <laughs>